Fitzroy Online, wherever you are across the world, we hope that you feel part of what we're doing here in Fitzroy. A couple of things to say, tonight, 7 o'clock, Gary Burnett's series on Paul and Ten, series that started last year, little 10 minute snippets on the theology of Paul, it became a book called Paul Distilled, and tonight's the last in the new series, but all of them are there, you can go in there and take 10 minutes a day and over 15 days you'll have Paul's Theology all sorted. Use that resource on Fitzroy TV. The last one goes live tonight at 7 o'clock. Thank you so much, Gary, for that series. No play it again. If you want to give to Fitzroy, you can do that online. Can I thank so many people that we have no idea about? And some that I know who you are, but you probably are not well known in Fitzroy from around the world who have given to us over these last number of weeks. Thank you so much for the support that you've been in this particular time. If you want to meet in Fitzroy, we were meeting this morning at 10, about 50 of us, and you can meet live on a Sunday, and we will be meeting next Sunday live, and if you want to be at that service, you need to register with Roberta, uh, give Roberta your name and the number of people in your bubble, and then you will be able to come and join with us um, next Sunday morning for that. As we go into a Sunday morning looking at the Lord as our shepherd. The good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Let's pray together. God, these are strange times we're living in. It's good to know there's a shepherd through the valley of the shadows around us. And sometimes we're wondering, where is our pasture land? But we thank you that whatever, however strange the waters around us, you're leading us and we can have confidence in you. We pray that this service today would be one in which we would hear the shepherd's voice, know the shepherd's voice and sense we belong to your community, your flock, with you leading us in these strange days. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our prayers this week will focus on the neighbourhood around Fitzroy and the work done by some of the different organisations that Fitzroy partners with. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you are a God that can't be confined to one group, but that you are always concerned with the other, reaching out from whatever we might call us. You're a God that loves everyone, regardless of caste or creed, and are working to draw everyone from all nations and all walks of life to you. Forgive us for the times when, in our mind, we restrict you to being our God and allow us to see again the full expanse of your love for everyone. Good Shepherd, we thank you for the wonderful diverse community in the area around our church building. We pray now for the students, the Roma, the refugee, the affluent, the foreigner, the Catholic, the Protestant, the Loyalist, the Republican. We pray for a sense of peace in all and that they may hear you and come to listen to your voice. Good Shepherd who cares for the sheep and surrounds them in love, we remember those working in community development work. We think now especially of Mornington Community Project we thank you for its presence in the community over many years and the impact it has had on many lives. But we are aware in the area it works in that many people are living in situations of poverty, of brokenness, of bereavement. We pray for those who are seemingly trapped due to the impact of past events. And we pray for the different work that takes place from Mornington. We think especially of the women's group and to scale the after schools club. We pray that as we come out of lockdown, relationships may be re-established and community strengthened. And we also pray for the planned building renovation work, that it may proceed with minimum disruption and that when finished, Mornington can be a centre of opportunity, of reconciliation, of renewal. We ask too, Lord, that you guide the staff and the board in all their work there. Good Shepherd who tends the vulnerable and the weak, we pray for those who must live depending on others for basic needs. We remember the work of Home Plus helping serving the homeless people sleeping rough in Belfast, and a food bank providing food and other assistance to growing numbers of people. We pray for all those who, re who receive help, that they may be encouraged and have renewed hope. We thank you for the staff and volunteers who work with both organisations. May they be refreshed in their vision and renewed in their vigour as they show your love to those in need. Good Shepherd of the sheep, we thank you that you came to set us free, to make us safe, to give us all abundance of life. We praise you that in you, we are able to live through good and ill with confidence. And so we ask that you hear our prayers, for we ask them in the name of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Amen.
John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. I've seen a high by holy wind I've seen a mirror pool cut by golden fins I've seen the leaves where they hide the truth of cities the man whose blessing you must accept without pity I've stood in airports guarded glass and chrome walk by full And my home. Seen a forest in flames right down to the road. Burned in love till I've seen my heart explode. Everything is 
I know that some of you like to get into a little bit of the creative insights as to how the Stockman sermon came together in the week and a little bit of the drama. If you remember last week it was midnight on Friday night when recording on at midday on Saturday I decided the sermon wasn't cutting it and I ripped it up and metaphorically of course and threw it away and started again. This week was slightly different. Uh, the reading from James earlier on, John 10 verses 11 to 18, that's the lectionary reading for the week and I got myself immersed in the Good Shepherd and that of course takes you back to the lectionary Psalm of the week which is Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and my mind started shaping those two things in some ways together and by Thursday night I was pretty sure I had it laid down, at least the key points, when George Sproul, uh, as he's been doing over the course of the last few weeks, sent me a song that he'd been working. I think George has discovered Garage Band and he's gone a wee bit mad on it and it's fantastic because every now and again he'll drop a song into my Facebook. Bob Dylan, Bruce Coburn, amazing stuff. And on Thursday night, it was Bruce Coburn's Strange Waters that you've just heard him sing. Now, I was sure when it dropped in that he must have had a message from Chris Blake saying, Steve's on the Good Shepherd, the Lord's My Shepherd on Sunday, if you have anything. But no, George has sent me this completely unaware of where my notes were for this sermon. And it was a little bit more than that when I questioned George about it at a Four Corners planning meeting on Friday because it seems that George was thinking that this song in some ways expressed where he was in his own journey of faith at this point. And I thought, isn't that a wonderful way to come into this sermon? Some A song that fits with the readings from the lectionary that doesn't come from the preacher but comes from one of the congregation singing how he feels at this point plugged in to the idea of God as shepherd and Psalm 23. Bruce Coburn's Strange Waters is one of Coburn. Coburn is a Canadian. He's a Christian. Uh, he's had quite an interesting journey of faith and doubt and back to faith. He sings some amazing songs about faith. He sings some amazing songs about politics. He sings some amazing songs about travel narrative. He sings some amazing songs about the wonders of the world. And he sings some amazing songs with all of those blended into one. And Strange Waters is a strange, dissonant, disorientated, spiritual song journey. Um, and yet it's incredibly powerful if you've been listening to it. You were maybe thinking, first of all, can't really sing along to this. But if you listen to it, you see this journey of someone who's wrestling with the world that they're living in and how this can be God's world and where God is in this world and how God might be leading them as shepherds in the middle of the world. It sent me off to Coburn's incredible memoir. It's an incredibly brilliantly well-written memoir. And um, in the memoir, before he puts up the entire lyric of Strange Waters, he writes this. These lines spring from a confidence that God, in leading me beside what at times are very strange waters, knows what he's doing. A confidence that God, in leading me beside what at times have been very strange waters, knows what he's doing. Yes, there's a little bit of wrestling and samic confusion in Coburn's strange waters. But in the midst of it, there's a confidence that whatever's going on around about, that he is doing the leading. The chorus, you've been leading me beside strange waters, streams of beautiful lights in the night. But where is my pasture land in these dark valleys? If I lose my grip, will I take flight? I was drawn to those last lines. We, we have our grip on things that might see us through difficult times. If we lose our grip on what we're depending on, will the shepherd lead us somewhere much more confidently? A better place? 
goodness, this last year has been strange waters, have they not? And no, I wouldn't believe for a minute, and I've said this over the 13 months that we've been doing these online services, that God didn't throw us into this virus. I do think that it's been a place where he's used in order to lead us beside waters that we maybe needed to hear from him and find his leading. The Lord is my shepherd. He may lead us beside strange waters, but is there a confident as confidence as Coburn had that he is doing that leading John chapter 10 verse 11 it's a good one after the my favorite verse 10 10 the good shepherd laid down his lays down his life for the sheep it's a very powerful verse and when Jesus was saying these things about shepherds you can be sure that Psalm 23 would have been in the mind of the listener. They would have been sure that Jesus was declaring himself the shepherd of Psalm 23 and that this was a declaration of divinity. I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for the sheep. Oh my goodness. This is Christology. This is John trying to explain to us who Jesus is. And of course, if we think about it, <clears throat> we would find ourselves going back to John 8, particularly John 9, into John 10, and realising that these chapters all move into each other. And that the Pharisees are asking questions about who Jesus is. And that the ordinary people, after the, uh, the blind man got his sight, his family, his neighbourhood, Everybody was saying, who is this Jesus? And John's making it very clear that he is the good shepherd, that he is the Messiah. That Christology is right there. And then there's something else about this shepherd. In laying down his life for the sheep, the sheep can have confidence in the shepherd. This is not just a declaration that Jesus is God. It's a declaration that this is a God, this is a Jesus that you can have confidence in. And of course chapter 10 talks before and after my favourite life and all its fullness verse about the knowing God and hearing God's voice. If I go back to verses 4, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. The shepherd is known by his sheep. The shepherd knows his sheep. The shepherd does the leading. They know his voice. There's this flock mentality. And then Jesus talks about hired hands. The hired hands... They could run away. They're only hired. The real shepherd's the one who laid down his life and invested in these sheep. He's the one to trust in. And some commentators have said that the Johannine community that John would have been writing this into at the end of the first century or near the end of the first century were facing harassment from the leaders of the synagogue. They were this Christian followers of Jesus sacked and the Pharisees and the synagogue were saying, no, 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 these are not the main guys. And the Pharisees had abandoned their people in AD 70 when Jerusalem was besieged and took off to another little village where they kept themselves separate from the people. Hired hands run away when it's dangerous. But the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is the one that you should put your trust and your confidence in. That even in strange waters, whatever those strange waters are, in the life that we live. And if we go back to the Coburn lyric. And we think about them. The way that a, a John Trinder. Or a Gary Burnett. Or a Steve Stockman will think about them. Then we put our own storylines in. Our own lyrics in. To the strange waters. And the strangest waters of all. For most of us. Have been this coronavirus. Hired hands. The religious. Whoever the religious are. 
even the minister who preaches online, might run away. Don't put your confidence in us. Put your confidence in the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. And then there's something else. Something that I'm going to use as a bubbling up over the last few weeks in Fitzroy. Jesus talks about this flock and then going to find the other flock and bringing the other flock in so that the flock can be one. And we could talk a lot about what that means. I imagine <clears throat> in Jesus' day there would have been a lot of talk in John's time in the Johannine community that that was the Gentiles because uh, Jesus and the life of Jesus, we see this shift from uh, the, the, the light um, the light that the Jews were going to be, that the, that the children of Israel were going to be to the world begins to really happen in the life of Jesus in the early church. They, from Judaism, that light of the world goes out and suddenly we have Gentile believers in huge numbers over the course of that end of that first century. So this, I have another flock and they have to come and join us, could be the Gentiles. But what I want to ask us in Fitzroy and whatever community you come from and you're part of our wider community nowadays, is who would be the members of the flock of Christ that are not with us on a Sunday morning. I don't mean the 50 or 60 that meet met this morning or will meet next Sunday morning, the ones that meet in lockdown. I mean when there will be such a gathering as Doug's song says and hopefully in the next while we're all back in church and the guitars are raging and the songs are belting out and we don't have to worry about masks when everything's back to what it should be and Fitzroy's together as a community on a Sunday morning again, who's not with us? What members of Jesus' flock are not in our gathering? Who have we left out? Or who wouldn't feel welcome? Who thinks that's not a place that I should go? I think we have a challenge there. I think we have a real challenge to think about race, colour, class, sexual orientation, people who have faith in Jesus Christ, who are members of Jesus' flock, but don't feel as yet at least that they would be welcomed into the flock that meets in Fitzroy. There will be missional challenge. We've been building to that over the last number of weeks. How we follow up the work we're doing with the homeless. How we follow up our footprint into Donegal Pass. What do we do in Lower Ormo? What do we do at Queen's University or Botanic Avenue? What do we do in the wider city? Now can I say that we've been great if we just see the other flock as the Catholic Church? Because there's so many of you who take part in services who are Catholics, who are married to members of Fitzroy, who are Catholics, who are elders in Fitzroy and have come from that Catholic tradition. We have, we have so many of you from that flock. But there's other flocks. There's other communities in our city that are not there on a Sunday morning in Fitzroy. They're not part of our worshipping community. And might we be the place that they could be? Might we be a community that needs to think about what we need to do to reach other communities, to welcome them in and make them part of us? That's a challenge here, I think. That's a challenge here. And so I end with where the pericope started, if not the sermon. I end with, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Lays down his life, gives up everything for Jesus, for God's flock. Something went up on Facebook, no it was Twitter at the end of the week, I think it might have been Gregory Thorburn, Thornbury, uh, writer of books. And it just said this, what are you willing to give up from your privilege and who are you willing to give it up for? I think that quote's embedded in today's reading. 
I think it's embedded in John chapter 10. What are we as a congregation willing to give up from our privilege? As individuals' privilege? As a community privilege? And who are we willing to give it up for? Oh, we can go into the week, whatever strange waters we're heading towards, with confidence that the Lord is our shepherd. And that he, unlike the hired hands, can be trusted because he has laid down his life for the sheep. But then he challenges us. With that wider flock, are there some of them today, as we listen to this online service, are there some of them today unable to come to churches? Oh, members of the flock, believers in Jesus, but they can't find a place where they might belong, where they feel they are part of this community of sheep led by a shepherd. I uh, foolishly didn't look it up, so I can't tell you what it is. But earlier in the week, David Compton put up a painting of Jesus as a shepherd with the sheep gathered all around him. And the sense of confidence in those sheep and the sense of lordship in the most gracious and generous way of that shepherd in the painting was how it should be. How we should feel today as we hear the voice that we know. To be known the way we love to be known and to be known by God the shepherd. And then to think, could we give up something of ourselves in order that others might know too and might really believe and feel they belong? Set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil while we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come and invade us now. are your church and we need your part in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and price to see the captive hearts release Hurt the sick, the poor, and peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. We are your church, and we pray revive this earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the this nation back chase the atmosphere build your kingdom here we pray unleash your kingdom's part reaching the near and far no force of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts you made us for much more than this awake the kingdom seed in us fill us with the strength and love of Christ we are your
your church and we pray the hope on earth. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and lands. Set your church on fire, bring this nation back. Chase the atmosphere, build your kingdom here. We pray, build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land. Send your church on fire, win this nation back. Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here. We pray. Thank you very much for being with us today. We hope that in some ways that service has somehow touched your life. And as you go out into a world where there may be strange waters this week. Let's have confidence in a shepherd who will lead us whatever the week throws at us. And let's imagine a few friends from Fitzroy, from our home congregation, just some friends. And let's pray this benediction, this prayer of blessing upon them as we set out into whatever the waters of the week are. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.